What's going on, everybody? It's Jamal from the Hogstyle back again with another Hogstyle film session. This episode, we have Cole Holcomb, a linebacker out of North Carolina. Uh, so, we're going to look at two games uh, one from 2017 and one from 2018. Uh, 2017 Miami tape and North Carolina of 2018 North Carolina State. And before I get into it, we'll go ahead and give an overview of, or my opinion of Cole Holcomb, where he stands now. <clears throat> So I believe Cole Holcomb has the size and speed to immediately, immediately contribute to the Washington Redskins this year. Uh, on que- on defense is the question. Um, I'm not so sure just yet. Uh, Holcomb displays good awareness, play recognition, physical player, has the speed, um, and he's adequate in pass defense uh, in inside the box mainly. However, uh, he is not very agile and quick on the field, and I have to put that in quotation marks. And I believe the reason to that is his uh, lack of decisiveness. Um, he's not a very decisive player. He's not uh, committed uh, to anything. He lets plays come to him. Um, and that can contribute to the inability to play at a faster pace or what you know his pro day numbers really resulted as. Because he, he produced really good uh, pro day numbers and essentially kind of boosted his stock really as a player, uh, which is good. You know, I mean, fifth round pick, obviously – you know, if he was, if they thought really highly of him, the NFL, he probably would have went in the third or fourth. Um, but fifth round pick, nonetheless. So, um, I, I think I don't think that he's very agile, or quick on the field, um, and, and may contribute to a lack of playing time defensively in 2019. I understand that many of you dislike Mason Foster. Um, I mean, you have your reasons. Uh, valid, can be valid. Um, so. I mean, we're not going. We're not going to get into you know Mason Foster issues, but you know I understand that some of you may not like him. But I mean, as an inside linebacker group, uh, as they continue to add depth to that to that unit, the young guys must continue to show that they are worth starting on first and second down over Mason. Uh, Cole has the physical traits, but must develop the aggression and decisiveness to be a better overall defender. <laughs> so, with that being said, we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, and, and see what we see from Cole Holcomb. And on pass defense, this first play is not necessarily even him uh, defending well or really good, but shows down the chase down ability um, and pursuit that he has, and it shows that 4-4 speed that you see. Um, that was very simple and very easy for him. That's, that's not nothing where that requires him to think or even um, let a play happen to him. He just has to go and get the ball or, def- or the um, offensive player. Here, um, this is actually good pass defense, makes a good play on the ball, and this is what you see inside the box, inside that 10-yard range um, where you're not asking him to go further down the field. A simple out route is what he's covering, makes a good play on the ball. Um, third and 13, right here you'll see uh, another another good play on the ball, but this is something that and you'll see down later in the film um, that, you know, it's not necessarily uh, that good, but you see the curl route. Um, and he's waiting for the quarterback to throw it uh, as opposed to, you know, making sure, take, taking that receiver out of the play completely um, and, and letting the play to come to him where he can just stick to his guy. If this is anything like a third and three or third and four, this may get completed for a first down because he decided to wait so late. None, uh, none, nonetheless, he makes a good play on the ball. So here again, third and eight. Clutch play, fourth quarter, 28-28. Um, now, you'll see a replay of this. I don't necessarily think he made a, he put a hand on the ball. However, he's there. And the presence of a defender makes a catch uh, pretty difficult for an offensive player anyway. So, he's blanketing the receiver. And I'll try and slow it down just a little bit. He's there. But, um, as you see, it switched quick. But, he's... I mean, it's, it's really, it's really, that's really good defense. No, I can't, there's nothing else to say behind that. Here, uh, you're within five yards. He's basically at the line of scrimmage, and he hands up the, def- uh, the running back. So, let me back this up one more time. Five yards, that's easy money. Put your hands on the running back. He's not getting out. And the ball was tipped. So, regardless, uh, if it was a questionable play for pass interference or anything, it doesn't matter because the ball was tipped. Here you see simple A gap pressure from Holcomb. Um, now the offensive lineman may have failed to pass this off to the to the guard, or the guard was was unable to pick it up. However, uh, 
he does have the speed and size to create this type of pressure. He is like around 230 pounds, I believe. For an inside linebacker, that's pretty good size. He's not undersized. He didn't come in like um, Josh Harvey Clemens, the safety, who's around 220. Um, and he actually may be, you know, heavier than 230. He may be around 240. I'm not sure, um, but I know he's not under. He's not an undersized inside linebacker. He will come in with the size immediately. So inside, he got pressure. He won't be sworn by offensive linemen. He'll be able to uh, provide some pressure if he needs to come in on certain packages. Again, you see, he has the capabilities to play inside the box, so he can be utilized as a person who can, you know, play adequate pass pass defense. Again, simple A gap pressure. The guard, he, he just he wasn't able to pick him up. Simple play recognition. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the angle that he took. That's not what we're looking at here. We're looking at play recognition. He's able to sniff out. He's able to sniff out the screen pretty quickly. And this was in both the games that uh, I looked at. He was able to sniff him out pretty quickly. And they all didn't look like this. So you can kind of you know critique me for for picking this one. <laughs> Out of all the all the plays I did see, but um, he's able to sniff these plays out pretty quickly, which is good for uh, good for him um, and necessarily good for the team as well. Uh, you want a guy with a high IQ um, and, and ability to you know sniff out things at the line of scrimmage or within two seconds of the play. Run defense, physical guy, stands up, look, stands up on the back, inside the tackles and the trenches. That's all you can ask for. He is a, he's a selfish teammate as well. Uh, this can you know come back to hurt him too. I mean, we'll show you uh, as he blows up the offense line. I believe that with the tackle uh, makes it play no gain, one yard if anything. Uh, does the same thing on, those, on this next play, third and two. Blows up the fullback and makes the play by himself. It's a very good play by Holcomb. You'll see the replay here. As his teammates bounces the play to the outside, he makes the play by himself on the perimeter. That's all you can really ask for. Again, blows up the tackle. Physical, he has it. I mean, that's that's really that's that's a really good thing to have for an inside linebacker to, to have that physicality. You know, he's not scared to go up against a bigger offensive lineman. Uh, he brings that. He packs a punch. Uh, he has the speed to you know to drive an offensive lineman back. Um, not consistent though. Uh, it's not consistent. He has the you know the awareness or wherewithal to to try and do that in certain plays, but you know he just has to you know be a little bit more consistent. Now the flaws or concerns would have been a better way to put it. Uh, pass coverage is something down the field. I feel like he has to worry about, uh, and this is an, an example of that understanding or recognizing where where to go to in the seams. Um, I don't think he understood what his assignment was. As you can see at the snap, um, he checks the wrong guy. He's wide open. Um, understanding like the zone zone concepts are a little bit easier for him, as opposed to recognizing you know where he has to be in man coverage and even defending man, uh, not defending man coverage, but more so uh, being able to play in man to man defense. Here's another play, the line of scrimmage where you see uh, simple actually making a play at the line of scrimmage. And this is what I mentioned earlier. Simple missed tackle. I mean, you, and, and 36 knows, Holcomb knows, you know, he should have made that play. And this is just something where, you know, even scouts, I, 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 I would assume, you know, this is something big for them. They'll tell you, if you're not able to make plays at the line of scrimmage for the amount of time, say if you, if you have 10 potential tackle for losses, in a game and you're only making two of those are you really are you really worth playing you know for a defense we'll run this back one more time i don't think you are because you want to get a person in there for example like ryan kerrigan um you may not like this but you know he has a lot of potential sacks that he misses out on because he's unable to get to the quarterback quicker uh and this isn't a ryan kerrigan critique uh, or ryan kerrigan film session but this is just an example of a person who has the potential to make more plays than he already does. Here, 
uh, another man to man this is a man to man concept uh, first off we're going to go back before we even get to the next part of this play because the play isn't over yet for Holcomb man to man concept gets bumped um, unable to check the inside or defend the inside and then he misses the tackle so I mean you can see that that's unacceptable here when we talk about lack of decision making or a lack of decisiveness and, and being timid on the field this is what hinders or this will hurt him from being on the field in 2019 and even further beyond that on defense uh, you see a running back out there 26 I believe his name I, I believe that's a running back I'm not sure maybe a tight end I don't know but as we get to this play you see Holcomb is just sitting there waiting for the route to come to him uh, you can tell that he's blocking off the inside he's not allowing any in routes any slants anything like that that's what he's defending However, this is the same route that the quarterback recognizes immediately uh, that Holcomb isn't playing well. Like, what are you doing? And we'll go ahead and get right into it. Runs right past him. And then not only that, he he gets he gets between the three uh, defenders and he scores. And as you'll see, look at 36, just sitting there. Waiting for a play to come to him. And then he's late reacting on the ball with that late hand in the air. Here is the simple play recognition. He's able to see it. Um, and I think this is more so to the, the part where he's thinking so much, he understands what's going on, but he's reacting slowly. And when you're not able to, excuse me, when you're not able to think freely on the field and play freely, this is why you're, at, you're looking a little bit slower than what you really are. Of course, he gets the ball out. He gets the ball out pretty quick. So the receiver who beat Holcomb on the inside, it doesn't even matter. Um, here, another example of making the play in the backfield. You know that's a that's a broken tackle. Um, he's not able to secure the tackle, and that hurts. That hurts. I mean, if if there was a fourth and one, and, and he's the only one who can make that play, but he doesn't. That's an example of having those ten tackle for loss, ten, ten potential tackle for losses, and you're not able to get that done. Again, show it one more time. But he has help, so that's fine. But for him individually, make the play. Here, we'll run the back one more time so you can see what happened. So, Holcomb sees the sees the uh, the running back inside. I mean, in the backfield, and essentially stutters. He waits for the running back to make some move instead of attacking the running back. Uh, but what that does, it gives the offensive lineman a, a chance to block him. He comes in untouched, but because he he, he waits. The lineman gets a chip on him. The running back goes down the field. That was probably about a 10-yard game, or if not 20. Um, I cut it off, so I can't necessarily remember, but it was definitely a first down. Um, here, you'll see him getting blocked, uh, driven all the way back. And, and this is one of the things that when he's engaged, uh, so again, as I showed you before, he's able to basically be like a, a cannonball or pinball and, and, and run into the offensive lineman. Or running back, um, he's able to run into the offensive lineman with incredible force and drive them back and make a play, or have his teammates make a play in the backfield. But when he's engaged with a with a lineman, he, it's hard for him to fight off the blocks. And this is one one example where they get a hand on him and he's a, he's not able to shed at all, and this leads to a touchdown. And another play where second and two, they made it to overtime. Obviously, as you can see. <laughs> Another example, <coughs> excuse me. Another example of him not being able to make the play in the backfield. Boom! They bounce it. They bounce it outside, but 36 and his teammate is not able to make it. Huge, uh, huge second conversion really for a first down. However, if he's able to make that play, we'll go back one more time. He's able to make that play. That's third and three. Maybe, maybe third and four really. So, and that leads to a touchdown for. Um, North Carolina State anyway so with that being said um, how he will contribute in Washington I believe Holcomb will immediately become one of the better special teamers in Washington he has played that or he's he's capable of playing that at, at uh, North Carolina and he's able to play that in Washington with his unique size and speed he can become a thumper and a tone setter in that aspect of the game 
he may also contribute, uh, be the one to contribute to turnovers on special teams as well as he gets down the field. Um, he's able to get down there quickly. Uh, so, you know, that is a big possibility for Holcomb himself. Defensively, he is fearless in how he attacks offensive linemen. He can blow up a play. He is good at making plays on the ball and pass coverage. However, he has to make more plays at or behind the line of scrimmage. He leaves a lot of plays on the field in that aspect and also struggles in making concise decisions because he waits for a lot of plays to come to him. If he can prove in these aspects you mentioned, he can become a solid depth player or even a starter at inside linebacker eventually. Um, so with that being said, uh, this concludes our film session for our new linebacker, our fifth round pick, Cole Holcomb. We appreciate you guys if you watched and listened this far to the video or to the end of this video. Uh, you know, it's, it's greatly appreciated. You know, the feed, feedback, uh, comments, and uh, critiques that we've been getting or basically that I've been getting throughout this entire time. I have been paying attention. I have been watching or reading the comments um, and just simply trying to communicate and, and, and uh, and basically correspond with you guys and understand that, uh, you know, we are trying to listen to you all and, and make this as best as possible. We understand that we aren't uh, necessarily perfect in this aspect, but we will continue to get better. Uh, and with that being said, we do have Moreland, Jimmy Moreland and Montez Sweat uh, film analysis on our website done by our, our co-host of the podcast show, Steve. You can find that on there. You won't find that on YouTube, a video like this. Um, but he has done those. And our website will be uh, linked in the actual uh, description section. And basically, with that being said, we are done with the rookie draft class for the most part. We will start getting to the veterans um, throughout the summer and over the course of the preseason as well. Um, and even throughout the year, of course, uh, we'll be uh, working on you know how or the angle that we'll be taking for the regular season. Um, not so sure just yet, but we will try and do one video a week. But we'll cross that road when we get to it. But again, with that being said, appreciate you guys for listening for like the third or maybe 300th time I've said it. <laughs> but yeah, um, and, and it's, it's greatly appreciated the feedback that we've been getting. So see you next time, and then thanks for watching.